Hi, my name is John Hall from Mower Magic, and I've been involved in the selling, supporting and testing of robotic mowers in the UK for over 18 years. I often get asked, what should I look for when thinking of buying a robotic mower? What's the difference between brands like Husqvarna and Ambrosio? Looking on websites and in brochures, you can see lots of images and videos, but you can't really get a feel for the build quality down to component level. In this video, I'm going to give you a nerd's eye view of how these two similar priced robots are put together. So here we go. Let's compare the build quality and user interface of the Husqvarna 450X and the Ambrosio L250i S Plus. Both suitable for extremely large lawns up to 5,000 square meters. Okay, so here we are with the Husqvarna 450X. The user interface on this robot is located under this cover. On first power up, you're prompted to enter your pin number, which you can select in the security menu. This robot features a 3.7 cm by 6.7 cm LCD black and white display, illuminated in blue. The menus are navigated using these arrow buttons and telephone style keypad. You can navigate in and out of, uh, of here by pressing OK on the option that you want. It feels a little bit like uh, a Nokia 3210 from the 1990s or a ZX81 from the 80s. But it's functional. You can do things like select your height of cut and um, change your security uh, password, uh, change the schedule. It's uh, not the clearest display, but it is functional. And uh, if you don't like this slightly old fashioned looking interface, you can actually do all of these settings via the free smartphone app for both Apple and Android. OK, here we are with the Ambrosio L250i. Uh, the user interface is located to the rear of the robot underneath this protective cover. Uh, the power switch is just to the right hand side of the screen. Now this robot features a much larger 9.5cm by 5.5cm full colour touchscreen display. Um, on powering up you are asked to enter a pin number, which you can select uh, in the menus. And once it's opened up, inside here you've got various different graphical uh, options to navigate through. Now I'm not going to go into detail of what all these different menus mean, I'm just going to give you a, a feel for how the different options look uh, navigating in and out. If you're unsure what any of the icons mean, you don't need to get the user manual out, you can just press the question mark button and then select the icon you're unsure about and it will tell you in English what that menu means. It's very very uh, easy to operate. Um, all of these menus actually can be done via the smartphone app for Apple and Android. But this is a really, really nice, intuitive menu to, to use. Probably the best I've seen on a robotic mower. The other thing uh, that's featured on this machine that isn't on a lot of robots is there's a winter charging socket here. So during the winter months when the robot's not in use, you don't need to keep putting this back in the base station uh, to charge it up or top it up. You can purchase an optional extra winter charging cable which plugs in at the rear here. All in all, this is a fantastic display. Uh, on this machine and um, it, it's got a great feel to it, so it's uh, very very intuitive. Okay, let's talk about some of the external features on these two robots. We'll start with the bumper collision sensor. Both robots actually use the same technology. It's a Hall effect sensor which is mounted underneath the top cover. The top cover is free to move in any direction in a fluid mo motion. So if a robot is driving across the lawn and it comes into contact with an obstacle from, say, the right side, the robot will detect that and turn to the left. If the robot strikes an object head on, it will detect that, reverse back and change direction. This is far superior compared to some of the older robots on the market, which have a very small bumper strip across the bottom and aren't able to detect higher impacts on the robot shell. It gives it better traction and better maneuverability. The charging contacts on the two robots are mounted in different positions. The Husqvarna has two copper strips either side of the nose cone, so as it enters the, the base station it makes contact with these two strips. On the Ambrosio it drives in under a gantry and these two stainless steel posts come into contact with the charging contacts. The top shells are both made from very high quality ABS plastic with a rubber reinforcing strip along the front edge on both of them. And the Husqvarna features uh, headlights and automotive style badges, uh, as does the Ambrosio. But the 
Ambrosio actually also features a rain sensor. So you can decide whether you want the robot to operate in wet conditions or stay in the base station until it's dry. That's uh, unique on this model. Rosfarna doesn't feature that option. The carrying handles on the two robots. On the Ambrosio, it's this metal, this aluminium tubular bar here. Very, very easy to see and hold of. Very comfortable to carry. And you can take it from the storage area uh, or move it from lawn to lawn. On the Hosfana, it's mounted underneath the rear bumper, just under here. And as you pick it up, you, you reach under and you press against the bumper springs. It feels a little bit odd, but it's functional and they both work well. Let's talk about wheels and traction. These two robots are made for massive lawns up to 5,000 square metres. So it's likely you're going to come across lots of different types of terrain, undulating ground, slopes, areas of poor drainage where it's often wet. So maintaining good contact with the ground is essential for these robots. Unless your lawn at home is like Centre Court at Wimbledon, you're going to need really good traction. Looking at the two robots side by side, you can see there's quite a difference in size, width and material quality. The Husqvarna 450X features 24cm drive wheels with a width of 3.2cm. They appear to be made from hard plastic with square plastic treads for traction. Let's measure the footprint of the wheels on a hard surface. The wheels on the Husqvarna have quite a small area of contact with the ground approximately 2.5 by 3.2 centimetres, giving a total contact area of just 8 centimetres squared. I worry this is quite small and may not be enough in tough, wet or undulating conditions. The Husqvarna is not fitted with wheel cleaners as standard to remove buildup of mulch and leaves. However, one can be purchased separately as an accessory kit. Okay, here we are with the Ambrosio L250i. This robot features much larger 27 centimetre diameter wheels with a width of 5 centimetres. The material this wheel is actually made from is a, a soft EPMD rubber uh, which has a really nice squishy feel to it. It's got an air filled centre. Uh, this uh, has a self cleaning action so as the robot's travelling over maybe wet or muddy ground if it picks up any debris as the wheel rotates and, and lands on a flat spot it ejects any build up uh, from the wheel. And there's also a, uh, a scraper bar at the back for secondary protection to remove any large clods or, or clumps of mud. Let's measure the footprint of this wheel. So on a hard surface uh, like concrete or paving, robots travelling between lawns, this robot has uh, a larger footprint of uh, 75 centimetres by 5 centimetres. So that's given a whopping just shy of 38 square centimetres of contact with the ground. If you compare that to the, uh, the Husqvarna here, uh, at just 2.5 centimetres of contact with the ground on each wheel, uh, the uh, Ambrosia has a significant advantage, especially if you've got slopes or undulating ground or areas of the garden which uh, are often wet. That's really going to make sure uh, it minimises any turf damage. So we can see the two wheels side by side in a bit more detail. We've removed them from the Husqvarna 450X and the Ambrosio L250i and you can see them side by side in their proportions. The Husqvarna is held on uh, via a washer and nut. There's a plastic decorative hubcap which is uh, just clipped on. The wheel is attached to the drive shaft by friction so the nut and washer uh, press the actual inside of the wheel onto this drive shaft and there's a few little ribs on there uh, which press against the, the plastic inner. The weight of this wheel is 600 grams and um, on a hard shiny surface like this there's very very little purchase for the wheel or this type of treads so you can imagine on um, a concrete path or a mowing strip if it's wet or damp there's not a lot of purchase there on the ground. On the Ambrosio, um, the wheel is made from uh, three parts. There's the EPMD rubber uh, tyre, uh, a front plate and back plate. 
and it's all bolted together using uh, galvanized steel bolts. In the center of the wheel, there is a molded hexagonal keyway made from galvanized steel, which fits onto this keyed drive shaft. It's held on using this 10 mil uh, Allen key bolt. The weight of this wheel is 1.3 kilos, so that's more than double the weight of the um, Husqvarna 450X. On a shiny, slippery surface like this, you can see when the wheel is pushed down under the weight of the robots, it runs on this flat spot, which acts like a caterpillar track and gives it amazing grip on any surface. Uh, even a shiny surface like this table, you can really see it's got excellent contact with the ground and that, that squashy feel helps to eject any buildup of uh, debris on the wheel. Putting the two wheels side by side, you can see the uh, proportional differences in the width and height of the wheel. Moving on to the front wheels now. Both robots actually use caster style front wheels. The Husqvarna has 10 centimeter by 3.2 centimeter rubber coated plastic wheels. Uh, they're fitted to stainless steel round bar axle shafts, uh, which is eight mil. Where the shaft enters the body, it's mounted into a plastic bush and it's got 360 degrees of travel, but no vertical in and out movement. So that's a, a fixed wheel in that position. Moving over to the Ambrosio, these feature slightly larger, 4.5 centimeters wide EPMD rubber coated wheels mounted on flat bar stainless steel axle shafts, uh, which is uh, three centimeters by 2.6 mil. They enter this carrier swinging arm via a, a stainless steel bearing which is mounted in there and it, we actually have three centimetres of vertical movement in and out on these wheels. So if the robot travels over uh, an undulation or a divot in the ground, this wheel can move in and out without taking traction away from the rear wheels. That may give it some advantages in rough, in rough terrain. Here's a close-up of the Ambrosio blade. It's made from stainless steel. Uh, the thickness of the blade is uh, approximately one mil thick. The blade is sharpened on both sides. So on this leading edge here, you can see it's sharpened. And when you turn it over, it's also sharpened on, on this edge here. It's secured to the robot using uh, four bolts. Uh, one of the things I forgot to mention about the Husqvarna is it's also supplied with a little pack of nine replacement blades and they can be turned over they are sharpened on both sides so every 30 to 90 days you can flip those over and then replace them and it's also supplied with replacement screws which should be uh, replaced when you change the blade okay. changing the height of cut so uh, when you first get the robot your grass might be long and you might need to start with a, a slightly higher cut and then bring it down over the next few weeks or the first cut of the season the grass might be a bit longer and you'll need to uh, bring the blade up or, or bring the blade down accordingly. It's quite different how this is done on the two machines. On the Husqvarna it's done uh, via the user interface so you put your pin number in, you go to the height of cut menu and select the height of cut you want and um, the next time the robot operates the blade will move to that height. I can't demonstrate that because it has to be done inside a garden with a working perimeter wire. On the Ambrosio, uh, you're supplied with a blade adjustment tool, which has got a scale on it uh, to show you in millimetres, if you can see it on the camera, uh, show you in millimetres what height um, the, the actual blade is at. And you insert the blade into the key, unlock the deck, and you can select the height that you want by simply raising or lower uh, the rotor deck. And once you've, you've got the desired height, which you can see clearly on the scale, you just lock it off and that's it. So it's, it's very straightforward. Looking at the two robots side by side from underneath, you can see there's quite a big difference in the proportions of the two robots made for the same size area. Uh, starting with the sizes, the uh, Husqvarna is 57 centimeters by 70 centimeters and the Ambrosio is 48 centimeters by 59 centimeters. The uh, other thing that's very notable is there's a lot of 
sort of wasted space around the inside of this chassis. Uh, this robot is far more compact um, in its own shell. And the other thing that I'm surprised about is there's actually three cables here uh, which protrude from the bottom of the chassis um, and they look a little bit vulnerable to me. They, they come from the top shell and then to the, then to the chassis um, vertically via these rubber grommets. So um, that just looks like a bit of a weak point to me. On the Ambrosio, there's no cables or wires exposed at all. It's all completely sealed. On the Husqvarna, there's also the main power switch located underneath the robot, just here, and a large label saying do not wash. Um, on the Ambrosio, you'll notice this mulching comb system here. This actually helps to stand the grass up before the blade gets to it, whilst also helping to comb in the mulch and protect the blade against front objects on the lawn. Uh, there's some extra rear protection in stainless steel at the back here and there's two nice rubber gaiters on the suspension arms for the front wheels uh, to, to fully protect those. Let's talk about batteries and chargers. We'll start with the Husqvarna 450X. This robot features a 10.4 amp hour 18 volt lithium ion battery and gives approximately four to four and a half hours of runtime on a single charge. The Ambrosio L250iS Plus features a 15 amp hour, 26 volt lithium ion battery and this robot runs for approximately 7 to 7.5 hours on a single charge. So we'll move over to uh, the charges and cables. The Husqvarna 450X features a 28 volt 7 amp hour uh, black plastic case power supply. It feels reassuringly heavy and well made. Uh, there's not really any external features, uh, it comes fitted with a, a moulded plug and uh, this is the exit to the base station cable. Uh, the base station cable is a two core uh, singularly insulated wire. It looks a lot like doorbell cable um, at two and a half mil thick. Uh, a little bit concerned that if you caught that with a strimmer or a garden tool you'd probably slice, slice straight through it quite easily. Uh, the Ambrosio L250i S Plus features a 29 volt, 12 amp hour, fan cooled aluminium case power supply. This uh, looks very, very impressive, uh, maybe even overkill for a domestic product. Uh, but that's probably because this manufacturer uh, actually makes industrial robotic systems as well, and some of the components are shared between their different lines. The uh, connection from here to the base station is made using this extremely thick uh, eight mil cable. Um, it's double insulated and feels really durable. If, uh, if that was to get caught by a strimmer or a garden tool, I, uh, I think that would survive quite well. Okay, so that's it. Uh, we've finished comparing the build quality of these two robots from different brands. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please hit the like button and share the video. Happy mowing!